in the grim darkness of the far future. There is only war. Welcome to the session, dear listener. I am Jack, your narrator, and I would like to take you on a journey into stories of Warhammer 40k. But these are not the official stories that more renowned narrators than I have covered. These are stories inspired by the rich lore of this universe, by the fans, for the fans. Let us begin. The Pale Moon by Jenny Ruskin Reality tore open with a sound like ripping fabric and the echo of a gunshot. The gaping hole bled colors no living being could name, and from it bloomed the smell of ice and sulfur. Garcia looked up from where he knelt on the floor and laughed bitterly. His gaze fell upon the bodies of his brothers. Their armor, once crimson trimmed in gold, was ripped, punctured, and blackened. He touched a pauldron reverently. I will see you again, said Cassia, when we tread a different path. Just visible through the devastation was a symbol of a serpent devouring its tail. He rose to his feet, pulled his cloak about his shoulders, and strode into the anomaly. It shivered and then closed behind him. When his vision returned, Cassia found himself on a barren moon beneath a kaleidoscopic sky, a world he hadn't seen for many thousands of years, unnamed and unremembered, save for him. The broken remnants of the moon's siblings tumbled across a tapestry of nebula and galaxies above him. On the western horizon, a gas giant rose into view, bathing the white rock of its cratered satellite in pink and amber light. Before him were laid out the tools of a ritual, just as he remembered them, in the same places and the same condition, as if no time had passed. Because, of course, it hadn't. Candles sputtering green flame were placed around an intricate design of runes and wards painted onto the pale rock in a thick, glistening substance. And standing in the center, a dark-skinned Astartes with a shaven head and gold-trimmed ruby armor adorned with a scarab on the chest. Cassia stared, then grinned at his younger self. It is about time, he said. The legionary in red frowned. The ritual was not precise enough to know when, only who. Cassia nodded. It was the same for when I performed it. How long has it been? That will be telling, said Cassia. No one should know the span of their life. Very well, said the younger man. I am glad that you came. The only person I can trust for this is myself. But first, I must prove that I am you, said Cassia, by explaining why you summoned me. His younger self nodded. You are a long way from your legion. There are rumors of legionaries, even whole legions turning traitor, and you believe some of the Astartes you've been assigned to are among them. You must find out the status of your brothers and your Primarch, and you cannot do so alone. You trust no one. However, what you have not told anyone is that you think that some of those who have turned traitor are right. The young Cassia took a step back, eyes wide. You cannot hide anything from me, said Cassia. I am you. I have to know the truth. We always do, said Cassia. Time is short, said his younger self. Follow me. It is done, said Cassia. Two rough platforms had been raised up from the rock of the pale moon. Standing half the height of an Astartes, they were surrounded by intricate designs made of lines and symbols that seemed to shift in the lights of the pirouetting galaxies. A figure stood on each, one clad in ruby armor, the other in a simple top cloak, both with heads bare to the sky. Two facets of a person, separated by millennia. Will you tell me anything of what to expect? asked his younger self. 
the ground began to rumble. It was deep and low. Cassia could feel it rise through his legs into his gut. I am sorry, he said. This never gets any easier. Cassia lowered his head, averting his eyes from his younger self. The rumbling grew louder and more urgent, as if the moon was trying to shake itself apart. He heard his counterpart grunt in pain. With a speed only an Astartes could muster, the younger legionary went from stationary to full sprint in barely a moment. Runes flared red in the air around the platform, and Cassia's younger self collided with them as if they were as solid as a ship's hull. <sighs> you ought the ritual! Why? said his younger self. Fate binds us. Binds me. But I will not be its slave, said Cassia. Do I become so blind? We could work together. You think I haven't tried that? The ground cracked along the patterns drawn in the rock, and a hot wind gushed forth. It whipped Cassia's cloak about his shoulders, and his counterpart paled at what was revealed. Cassia wore armor of a similar hue to his younger self, though it was perverted, warped into strange patterns. In the center of the chest, where there was once a gilded scarab, now an eye stared out. Cassia's right arm was bare, and from the elbow down, his umber skin turned a vivid shade of violet. Magenta feathers sprouted from his forearm, which ended with long, gnarled talons instead of fingers. I require the strength to change what happens, said Cassia. To tread a different path, his younger self spasmed in pain. How many times? Cassia remained silent. How many times have you done this? He bellowed over the roaring from the earth. How many of us have you killed? Cassia looked away. His younger self screamed and fell to his knees. White lights erupted from him. It poured into the runes which glowed ever brighter until each one shone like a sun. Cassia spread his arms. In a great flash, the light flew to him and into him. Then there was stillness and silence. Cassia stood for a moment before slowly facing the empty armor on the opposite dais. Truly, I am sorry, he said. He saluted his former self briefly, in the old fashion, with a clenched fist. This time, I hope our paths do not cross. And so, with our story concluded, I would like to invite you to another reading at your leisure. If you're a person that prefers the written medium, then I shall share the library in which these tales can be read in the description. I am not affiliated with 40k cold open stories, just a man who enjoys the tales therein. Until next time, dear listener. <laughs>